Alright, what's up guys? Rev to Red Line here. Long time no talk. Just kidding. It's only been about three or four days. This is kind of an amazing thing for me to do is have vlogs that close together. I'm riding out with my buddy here in front of me. He's got a beautiful 2012 CBR 1000 RR. And that's one of his three bikes. Not fair, he's got three and I only got one. Yeah. But I'll get over it, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, so he's got a, this beautiful CBR 1000 RR in front of me. And then he's got a Ducati 2005. I don't remember what model it was. And then to top all that off, he's got the 2013 KTM RCA, which is another badass bike. And here I am with my one lonely bike. So I'll pull up and get a little up close shot of his bike here. But yeah, so we're heading out to Palomar Mountain, which is a popular, fun, dangerous mountain. That's one of my favorite courses to ride. Um, so yeah, that's where we're on our way up there now. Kind of lucky because I got a Thursday off and so does my buddy. It's going to be nice and slow up there because it can get really busy and dangerous on the weekends. So I wanted to talk about what made me choose getting a sport bike over a cruiser. Now just to give you a little background, when I was in my early 20s, my mom used to say to me if I got a motorcycle she would disown me. And she was uh, definitely for real. But then later on in my late 20s, she came out and said pretty much she doesn't mind if I get a motorcycle because she feels I'm more mature and I, I wouldn't be crazy on my bike. So sure enough, a couple years later, I go and pick up a motorcycle and I show her my Honda F4i and she was actually a little shocked. And she told me that she didn't think I was going to be getting a super fast racer. She thought I was going to get like a cruiser. Now back to the reason why I chose the sport bike over the cruiser is... I've always been more of a fan of sport bikes my whole life rather than cruisers. I've always been more into speed and racing and I've always owned sports cars. And I personally just think sport bikes are badass pieces of machinery. And so that was always my mindset, but also I was still leaning towards a cruiser because I know a cruiser is slower and probably a little bit safer. But then I just started giving it more and more thought and talked to a couple people and they had some, some good arguments to that. And basically they were saying a cruiser uh, isn't as agile and it doesn't have uh, good brakes and there's plenty of stuff that can go wrong riding a cruiser and you can still go pretty fast on a cruiser maybe not the same speed as a sports bike but so started giving it some thought did some research and decided to buy my 2005 Honda F4i and for those who know I don't ride that bike anymore even though it was an awesome bike I do recommend that to anybody who is debating getting that bike for a first size 600. And you guys can watch my other vlog on my opinion on having a 600 as your first bike. But yeah, I did some research and that 4 i was a really good learning bike for me. It was comfortable, it was, and, uh, but it was still extremely fast. But yeah, so that's what made me choose getting the sport bike over a cruiser. And I'll tell you this, I have no regrets whatsoever. Now my buddy in front of me is definitely a better rider than myself. He's been riding for about eight years now. And... <laughs> When you know it, we come across a freaking trash truck. Son of a bitch. I guess uh, that's a good time to keep talking because I'm going to be here a while. So, uh, yeah, so I had no regret on getting my sport bike. I do know they're dangerous and 
Um, but you know, all motorcycles are dangerous and it's just the, the chance we are willing to take riding any form of a two wheel piece of machinery that's not a scooter. I actually rode my buddy's Harley and it was uh, definitely, definitely a different experience. The position and the way the bike handles and you know, I could say this, on that big Harley I rode, the handling was so slow on it that there's no way I could get myself out of tight situations like I could in a sport bike. So in order to get out to Palomar, we gotta go through some Indian reservations out here. And we will be passing a couple casinos, like this one over here to my left. This is Valley View Casino, for all you die-hard gamblers. I personally don't gamble, it pisses me off too much. I did it a couple times and I realized that every time I left the place I was pissed off because I lost all my money. So I choose not to do that. But yeah, so we're going through, uh, we're about to go through Rincon Reservation. And a crazy story that just recently happened about a month ago is one of my rider buddies who rides up at Palomar a lot. He parked his limited edition R1 out in front of this little liquor store out on the reservation. And he admits it was really dumb on his part because he left the keys in the ignition, which, yes, I know, dumb, but he agrees. But that still doesn't give the person a right to steal his bike, which is exactly what happened. Somebody came up, hopped on his bike, and took off. And... Of course, like, anybody flipped out. He came back later that night and was driving all around the reservation looking for his bike. And he was so determined that he actually camped out and were and he went around questioning some of the, the other Indians out there on the res and started finding out some information and then you know other people said oh yeah it's this guy and oh I think I know who it is and so he ended up camping out in the approximate area of where he found out this this guy lived I guess the guy was like 25 years old and was riding past a gas station and saw another R1, but it was primered black. And he goes up and he knew right away it was his bike. And the asshole thief, within one day, primered and painted his whole bike. And it looked like shit. And I mean, this is a really nice R1, limited edition. I, I forget what what model it was, but there's only a certain amount made, and it had you know yellow rims, and the bike was yellow and black, and it was painted all black. And he just goes up to the kid and says, "Look, I just want my fucking bike back. Give me my bike, and I won't press charges." And then sure enough, the kid's saying, "No, it's not your bike. It's my bike. It's my bike." And the guy said, "No, it's not." And so the guy ends up calling the tribal police and they said did you file a police report and the guy said no and the tribal police said well there's nothing I can do there's nothing we can do so he's about to lose the bike again and I don't remember exactly what happened but basically my buddy said no nah, I'm taking my bike and he got his bike back and I'll tell you what he did a hell of a good job cleaning it up because he's able to get a lot of the primer off and you know, the, the guy painted the rims, the nice yellow rims, he painted them black. And, but uh, my buddy ended up cleaning up the bike really good and was uh, actually from a distance hard to tell that it was ever painted, but still a pretty dick move. But lesson learned here is file a police report. Don't, don't just try to, you know, have your own justice. I mean, you can do both, but I, I would say file a police report because those tribal police weren't going to do crap for him unless he had filed a police report. So, file a police report and feel free to do your own justice, but be safe in doing so because, 
you might get yourself uh, face to face with somebody who's a little bit crazier than you are. So, but anyways, he got his bike back. He's a happy camper and just had to put a little bit of uh, elbow grease into it to get all the paint off. With that being said, I hate thieves. I, I fucking hate thieves. They're one of my biggest pet peeves ever is thieves. Work, work for your own shit. Don't steal other people's shit. You know, that kid could have got a job and saved up for a bike instead of stealing somebody else's hard-earned money and taking theirs. But yeah, so we're about to hit up Palomar. Like I said, I'll try to get a video up of us uh, going up it as long as I get some good footage. And that's my vlog, and until next time. Thought I would do a quick update on my way to work this morning on my trip to Palomar the other day. If it sounds like I have a morning voice, it's because I do. I'm about to travel 40 miles on the freeway to go to work and it's like 7.45 in the morning. That feels good. But yeah, so Palomar. It started off great. Um, it was probably the fastest I've ridden ever on Palomar going up and down and um, just had a really good time and then towards the end something a couple crazy things happened so just to back up a little about three months ago I was riding my bike and I felt something scratching my chin and I thought it was like a twig or, or a piece of grass or something and then all of a sudden the thing that was scratching my chin crawls all the way over my face and of course I freak out and I pull over the side of the road and I take off my helmet and sure enough there is a bee crawling around on the inside of my helmet but I got really lucky because it actually stung the inside lining of my helmet so Luckily, it, it wasted its stinger on my helmet instead of my face, which I appreciate, Mr. B. So, fast forward back to Palomar Mountain. I'm riding and all of a sudden I feel the sharpest pain in my chest and it hurt like a mofo. And I pull over really quick. And I pull off on the side of this twisty road into some, you know, little dirt turnoff that's all gravel. And I'm just, I keep feeling this pain just, you know, shooting from my uh, chest. And open up my shirt and sure enough, as I was riding, a, a bee had flew right into my chest and stung me. Now, I'm not surprised because I know it was eventually bound to happen. I think this something like this is going to happen to anybody who rides. So that's one part of the Palomar story. So like I said, great run. I, I was hauling ass at some of my best speed yet. Uh, and then some little piece of shit B decided to fly right into my, my jacket and sting me dead center in the chest. So that kind of sucked. Uh, here's a picture of the stinger. Might not look like much, but... That shit hurt. So, we also met this really cool guy up there. Like I said, it was on a Thursday, so there's no real traffic. And he, he had a brand new, beautiful 2013 CBR 600. And, you know, we asked him if he wanted to join us for a couple runs down Palomar. And he did. And it turned out the guys, he's got a decent amount of miles. He had 6,000 miles under his belt, but the problem is it was all commuting. So he wasn't really familiar with the, you know, the canyons and, and corners and turns and whatnot. So anyways, uh, he was following us and we were a lot faster than he was. And me and my buddy make it down to the bottom of the mountain and we noticed he's not there, so we didn't worry too much at first because, you know, we were just giving him a little bit of time, but then like five minutes passed by, and then we were seriously worried. 
and uh, so we go back up the hill and I'm seriously I'm just praying to God that nothing happened to this guy he's, he's a younger kid he's 20 years old and like I said just a really cool guy and uh, we're going up the hill just looking all around and on my way up there I notice a broken pillar off the, the little safety rails on the side of the road and I know it's completely snapped and of course then I'm going damn I really hope that's not him so I kept going me and my buddy were going up just looking all around for him then luckily we finally came up to him and he was on the side of the road with a completely wrecked bike I mean he wrecked he just pretty much totaled his bike his front forks were completely snapped show you guys a quick video of it right here um, luckily he wasn't hurt at all but the mistake he made which is another super common mistake I talked about this in another one of my videos was you need to ride your own ride you can't try to keep up with people that might be out of your experience level so you know he was trying to keep up with us trying to do the same speed as us and ended up taking a corner way too fast uh, he ended up low siding and the bike pretty much beefed it hard and felt really bad for the guy I mean damn that's gotta suck 2013 CBR 600 wrecked most likely totaled but anyways just wanted to give you guys an update uh, I'm on the freeway now winds getting a little heavy here I don't even know if you can hear me a little dangerous so I'm gonna have to let you guys go until next time shit